opposites, integers, and rational numbers. And you guys are familiar with whole numbers, um, or at least you are and you don't know it. Um, whole numbers are the counting numbers, numbers like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, all the way through infinity. The numbers that you've probably been used to working uh, with since pre-kinder, kinder, first grade. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to add to that a little bit. Your, your different styles of numbers that we'll be working with. Um, and the first thing we'll talk about is opposites. Um, opposites, uh, when you think of that word opposite outside of math class, um, what comes to mind? What do you think of when you think of the word opposite? Okay, so maybe some of the things you came up with like the illustration here, up and down are opposites. Up is the opposite of down. Um, happy, the opposite of happy uh, is sad. Inside and outside, um, hot and cold. There's a lot of different things we could come up with. When we apply this to math and numbers, um, here's what we're looking at. Um, kind of like addition is the opposite of subtraction. When you add to something, uh, the opposite of that is to take that away. So the example of this is real important. So on your notes page, in the left corner where it has opposites, make sure you have this written down, um, and definitely make sure you include the example right here. The opposite of 3 is negative 3. And for some of you guys, uh, uh, we're incorporating negative numbers for the first time. So um, anytime you have a, a positive regular number like 5 or 7 or 8, the opposite of that is going to be its negative opposite or that negative value on the other side of the number line. So like I said, 7. The opposite of 7? will be negative 7, okay? I can show this on a number line if I do this real quick, and, and you can follow along and just kind of sketch it in. It's not going to be perfect. But on this number line, 0 is in the middle. And if we use our 3 example right over here that we've been working with, um, 3 is here, 1, 2, 3. Positive 3 is 3 places to the right of 0 on a number line. Negative 3 is going to be, so if I, let me do this. 3 is 1, 2, 3 positive places to the right. Negative 3 is down on the other end. So I'm going to go 1, 2, 3 this way to get to negative 3. So I still move 3 spaces, but this time I go 3 spaces in the opposite direction. I was going that way. And that makes this perfect opposites 3 and negative 3. So 0 is not an opposite of a number. 0 just means I don't have any value at all. So any number, 500, the opposite is negative 500. Now, negative 3,000, the opposite would be 3,000. That's how we come up with opposites in math. All right, integers. And integers, you're going to hear a lot about this year, so you should get pretty familiar with them. And again, like I said at the beginning, you're familiar with whole numbers, the counting numbers, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Well, those are also integers. Uh, all the counting numbers are integers, but integers means we also include something else besides just the counting numbers. Uh, integer is a number with no fractional parts, so it's not a fraction, it's kind of a whole number, consisting of negative integers, 0, and positive integers. So like I said, 1, 2, 10, 700, these are whole numbers, they're also integers. But integers also include these, they include the negative numbers, so make sure you have this example down in the integer section on your notes page. So negative 56, negative 2, negative 3,000, negative 8. These are all integers right here because they're negative values and we include those when we are talking about or doing operations with integers. So remember there's no fractional part. That's a very important part here. There, you don't see any fractions in these examples or decimals. They basically look like whole numbers but they're either positive or negative. Those are integers. Um, remember these values right here? These are both whole numbers and integers right over here because they are the counting numbers like whole numbers and integers. We also include those in integers. These values right here are only integers. If it's a negative number, it's only an integer. It's not a whole number. Back when you were learning counting numbers, we didn't start with the negatives when we were talking about whole numbers. Just integers for counting numbers. Okay, so if we add even more to that, we go even deeper, we start talking about rational numbers, rational numbers. So rational numbers, as you can remember from integers, that was like a whole number looking, uh, a whole looking number, either positive or negative, but it didn't have a fractional part. Well, here's what we do with rational numbers. 
Now with rational numbers, we can add the fractional part. The definition, go ahead and put it down. It's a little confusing, but we can simplify it a little bit. It says a number that can be written as a over b, where a and b are integers, and b is not equal to 0. Okay, you can write that down, but the examples are really important here, okay? Because these tell you what rational numbers are and show you what some of them look like. So a rational number now includes a fractional part. So if a number has a fractional part, has a fraction or a decimal, it is a rational number. Now, almost any number you can think of is a rational number. And it gives the example of 6. And yes, 6 is a whole number. You're probably thinking of that. 6 is also, like we just talked about, an integer. But 6 is also a rational number because we can turn it into a fraction. How do we do that? Put an arrow down. Remember, 6 whole, 6 over 1. So 6, right over here, is a rational number. So are the fractions. You see the fraction examples right over here. 3 fifths is a rational number. 0.75 is a rational number. 2 and a third. All of these, if a number has any fraction or decimal part, it's a rational number. So again, that's going to include almost any number you can think of when we're talking about rational numbers. All right, little bonus here. Absolute value. Does anyone in the room know what absolute value, a number's absolute value is? Give it a shot. Okay, so when we talk about absolute value, again, we're, we're working with integers or rational numbers, numbers that could have negative values in them. But um, an absolute value is kind of defined as this. It's the distance of a number from its origin. By the way, its origin is going to be zero. Whether the number is on the right side or left side of the origin, the value of the number is how far away the number is from zero. I'm going to underline this part, and I want you to make sure that this resonates with you. The value of the number is how far away the number is from zero. Absolute value. So I'm going to sketch my number line one more time over here. So it's not too difficult, but it's easy to confuse absolute value. If we go back to our example of 3, 1, 2, positive 3 is here. Negative 1, 2, 3, negative 3 is here. Okay, absolute value is the distance of a number from 0. So look at positive 3. How far away is it from 0? 1, 2, 3. It's three spaces from 0. So when you see absolute value, you see these bars, and you'll see the number inside of it. So the absolute value of 3 is equal to 3. Okay, well, then what's the absolute value of negative 3? How far away from 0 is negative 3? A lot of people will say negative 3, but the truth is it's also 1, 2, 3 spaces away from 0. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative, it's just 3 spaces away from 0. So the absolute value of a negative, uh, like negative 12 for instance, well negative 12 is 12 spaces away from 0. I know it's negative 12, it moves to the left, but the absolute value is still going to be a positive. We're going to represent that as a positive 12. So just remember that. It's how far away a number is from zero, and you'll never represent absolute value with a negative answer. It's always going to be a positive answer. All right, so there's uh, some quick information on opposites, integers, and rational numbers. Make sure you keep this in your journal for further reference.